I'm Earl Stewart. I welcome you to Earl Stewart on Cars Mystery Shopping Report. Kia and Stewart. The last shop we did back in February of the year shined a light on one of the bigger premiums over MSRP, which was uh, 16300 over MSRP. Prior to the inventory crunch, we investigated some questionable direct mail offers from Wallace Volkswagen, just more evidence of what appears to be a broader and longer pattern of ethical decay. At Wallace Cadillac, we discovered a denim with nitrophil and auto butler. At Wallace Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, uh, the, the add-ons included the same pinstripes and a Wallace protection package. But if you go back three or four years, the shops are much better, mild and pleasant. We don't know why things change. We've only been able to speculate about things like changeovers in management or Bill Wallace being spread too thin. The hope we had this week was that we would find the good Wallace dealership, one that made it through the last few crazy years. That would really be an accomplishment. Uh, spared from the temptations that almost all other car dealers have succumbed to. Okay, here's a report on Agent Lightning speaking in the first person. I was greeted by an older salesman named Michael. As soon as I exited my car, he shook my hand, led me inside, out of the heat. We sat at a table and Michael began a round of questioning. The usual stuff, name, rank, serial number. Uh, he wrote all of my answers down. I told him I was interested in a Kia Forte. Is Michael that seemed that happy. Much? to let me know whether he actually had one in stock and available. He offered to pull it up front for me and asked me to wait for him. Michael was back in a few minutes to say he did not have any new Fortes in stock. He thought they should have one available any day now. I asked him if he could look around the lot for something. Michael told me they have their way of doing things here, and the dealership frowned on customers <laughs> wandering around. Then Michael told me he believed they had a new 2023 Kia K5, sporty sedan about the size of a Toyota Camry available. I agreed to consider it. Once again, he asked me to wait. I asked to go with him, but Michael did not seem to want company. <laughs> he told me it was too hot outside, but I kept pressuring him. We went outside together and found three identical Kia K5s parked together. I told him I liked the car, asked to see more of it. Michael said he needed to pull it up front for me, <laughs> and here we go again. I walked back to the front of the dealership. Michael pulled up right away, right after I got there. He popped the hood, showed me the breakaway engine mounts and the excellent welding. We went all over the features of the car, then we took it for a test drive. The MSRP was $28,985. There was an addendum. It was the $39,95 addendum and called market lin uh, limited, limited market availability. And they had the auto butler, the nitrofill, first oil change. That's strange. Mm -hmm. Wallace's list price was $32,984. Okay. We came back to the dealership, went inside, found the same table. I asked for a pricing breakdown. He printed a purchase agreement that gave him to handwrite the figures. Michael wrote the MSRP incorrectly, $29,895, and I corrected him. He asked if I was sure, and I tried to show him the picture I took. He wouldn't look. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. Tears himself. They have their way of doing to check things. The, yeah, right, to <laughs> check the car anyway. And uh, I saw Michael walk back inside and head over to the counter where all the sales managers were. Then he headed back my way. He sat down and informed me. He had asked his manager if he could go ahead and split the market adjustment with me, and the boss approved. Michael continued to handwrite on the sheet. He corrected the MSRP. Evidently, uh, Agent Lightning was right. I was right. Then he added $2,000, half of the market adjustment. Then he wrote, plus taxes and fees. Then he wrote $849. I asked him if I could get something printed out that detailed the things I would be paying for him. He said, no, this is how they do it here. <laughs> I wonder if he really kept saying that over and over again. That's uh, yeah, really funny. I, write, I write every time he said it that she wrote it down, right, I put yeah. it in the report. Yeah. To write again, asked me to use a calculator on my phone, do some math for him. He wrote... I thought that was funny, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Approximately 34,350 plates and 34. Uh, I asked Michael to help me figure out uh, the, the front door, no, out the door number. And he replied, the only way to get an exact number is to go through financing. And that was it. I was out of there. And, of course, this is uh, th that last comment is one to uh, think about is that you never know until you get out of the finance office what you really paid for the car. Uh, there's too much time taken in the negotiation and time with the salesman, too much time for you to look at things, to check things. Uh, 
So they, a lot of dealers save the big stuff, the big screwing for the finance department because if the finance department, you're defeated. You're, 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 you're in a state of euphoria. You bought that new car you've been thinking about and dreaming about. You're thinking about parked in your driveway, telling your family and friends. And so you walk into that finance department almost like in a daze. And that's where they hit you with a lot of extra fees and products that you didn't approve. And we talk too much about the sales process really here at Earl & Cars because it's impractical for us to go through the finance department. We probably need to do it, uh, even if we only did it once every six months, to go through and actually buy a car, and we can turn around, sell it, get rid of it somehow or other, uh, and the cost will be worth the true experience of what happens in the finance department. Because they're spitting out reams of paper from that high-speed printer and that computer, and you sign your name so many times, it would be impossible, even if you were an attorney, to read everything you signed. And they know that, and the dealers call it the box, as our regular listeners know, because there's so much deception goes there. So, uh, every time we do a shopping report like we just did here, think there may have been something waiting for Agent Lightning in the box that we don't know about. Time to vote. Should have been a B, but it's a C. C. For me, I'm going to say D. Well, you say, Mrs. Sunrise. This is the way I do it. F. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with a C. Okay. I'm going to say that's an average vote. Uh, I, I want to say one thing about Michael, the salesperson. Remember, when you go into these dealerships, here's a guy. For all I know, he's uh, an okay guy, and he maybe he needed the money. He says he he said he got bored, but maybe he was bored and also needed the money. And you go a week for a car, a car dealership, and they tell you, uh, if you do exactly what I say, you can make uh, ten thousand dollars a month. But you have to do exactly what I say. Right. And some of this is. People that need money, working hard to feed their families, following orders, kind of like a Nuremberg thing. Nuremberg defense, yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Earl Stewart. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to be notified of new videos that we post to our YouTube channel, simply click on the subscribe button and the bell icon in the lower right-hand side of the screen.